Hi, this is Janet Leonard. This is a retake of my Monday Live on September 20th, 2021, because unfortunately there was an audio problem. So I was kind of like a silent movie. So let's give it a try and uh, this is the retake. Alrighty, so first of all, we'll come on over and just to let you know, in case you want to know more about uh, these lives that we do every Monday, you can go to virtualinstructor.com and you can see the calendar right there on the home page. Today we're talking about Zoom, so I'm going to give you some tips and tricks for both participants and meeting organizers. And then if you're interested, next week I'm going to be talking about the 3D objects in Microsoft 365, which is formerly Office 365. So same thing, they just changed the name. And then if you're a PowerPoint user and you don't know about this, on October 4th, I'm going to talk about photo albums. Really great little feature. A lot of fun ways that you can use that. And on the 11th, I'm going to start, I'm going to talk about some Outlook tips. So if you're an Outlook user, you might find that helpful. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about some Zoom tips for you. Now, I can't really do this on Zoom, so what I've done is some screen captures and then I'm going to talk about different things that you're going to see when you're a participant in Zoom and I will point out the ones that you only see if you're a meeting host. Here is the traditional Zoom toolbar. Some of these features you're not going to see if you are a host, excuse me, if you're a participant. And then also, depending on the resolution of your monitor, or maybe you're on a laptop so you have a smaller screen. Some of these features you might not see right now, but if you go to the little point place here that says it's a dot, dot, dot more, that's where you'll see those. So if you don't see something I'm talking about, good chance if you go to that more button, then you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's start talking about the uh, microphone button. And there's a little up pointing arrow, and if you click on that, you're going to see quite a bit of information that's helpful. If you have multiple microphones, which I do, and you can see I have quite a few, if for some reason it thinks I'm using a different microphone than I think I'm using, then I you might have problems hearing me on the Zoom call. So if you've ever had people that have problems, you'd want to tell them to go click on that little up arrow and make sure that they've selected the right microphone or try changing to a different one. Now the same thing is true with speakers. Sometimes they can't hear you and depending on your system you might have multiple speakers. So this is where you can go change that. And then down toward the bottom you have some audio options that are really important to know about, especially if you're a presenter. So over in the test speakers and microphone, this is a great place where you can double check that Zoom is assuming you're same, using the same speaker and microphone as you think you are. And so you can test it out and if it doesn't work, you can go to this little drop down or just say, try another speaker. And then as soon as you actually see some little color changes on that output level for the, the speaker, you'll know that it has a speaker that you can hear. And then after you choose yes on that, then you do the same thing with your microphone. So again, if you have multiple microphones, you might have to click on this drop down and then choose the microphone you want to use. And then once everything checks out okay, then you know the test is, is finished and 99% of the time it's going to work just fine. Now here's something that is really important to know about. If you are in a meeting or if you are actually hosting the meeting, if for some reason your sound goes out, then as long as you've got your cell phone nearby, you can quickly dial any of these numbers, put in your meeting ID, your participant ID, it connects right back to Zoom, and then you're back able to talk to people. So I've only had to use that a few times, but boy, is it nice to know about if you need it. And then you have audio settings. Now, when you click on this, this actually takes you into the settings that's part of the Zoom desktop. So you can adjust things here and you can actually get a little fancier. So I just wanted to point that out for you. Now let's move over to the video. And again, there's a little up pointing arrow so you can pick your camera. Now I have three different cameras set up. So right now I'm using the, um, the USB one, but there's a really cool program called mm -mm, and it's mm -mm app. And you can actually create backgrounds 
not like a Zoom background, but you can actually put PowerPoint presentations, have text. You can do some really cool things for your online presentations. So I happen to have, uh, this is my mm -mm camera. So if I was using that mm -mm app, then I would use that camera instead. And then I could actually show some pretty interesting different backgrounds and it just can spice up your presentation. So the mm -mm app, I actually did a live, Monday live on that. And so if you go over to our YouTube station, so it's youtube.com forward slash virtual instructor. And if you go to our playlist and you choose the Monday lives, then you can see the different live um, presentations that I've done. And here is the one on mm -mm Chunky. So it's pretty cool. It's a free program. There is a paid version, but you can do so much with the free program. So I highly recommend that. All right, back over to Zoom. Then you can also choose your virtual background and you can always upload more virtual backgrounds here. And then you also have um, what are called filters, which you can get from the virtual background or you can get from choose a video filter. And that's kind of fun. You can put some filters in. Probably not that professional for a business meeting, but if you're having fun with your friends, those are kind of fun. All right, and then there is something called mirror your video or mirror my video. And you actually can get that from either the virtual background or the choose video filter. So if for example, virtual instructor, my sign in the back was backwards, then I could turn on the mirror my video and then people would be able to read that. So that's kind of nice to know about because it's kind of annoying when you see people have something written in the background, but it's reversed. Now, this is kind of fun. A lot of people don't know about it. It's been around for a little while and it's called Studio Effects. Now with the Studio Effects, when I click on that, you get different effects that can be added to your video. So women, we kind of like this in case we forgot to put lipstick on, you can pick a different lipstick color and uh, you can pick different eyebrows and uh, men and women if you want, but you could also choose a mustache or a beard. So it's kind of fun. Now, the only thing I will caution you on, because every once in a while I might use a lipstick because I forget to put it on. Um, if you then move your head real fast back and forth, it almost looks like a cartoon because the lips kind of follow you. So just be aware of those studio effects. Don't start moving around real fast if you're, you're using those. Now, another feature that's kind of cool is if you go to the video settings, and this again pops you into the settings that's really part of the Zoom desktop app, but there is a feature called touch up my appearance. And so if you check it, you could actually kind of um, fade yourself a little bit. So kind of like the old fashioned movies where when they wanted the, to make the woman look a, a little softer, I think they put like a nylon over the camera. So it's kind of like that. And um, you can also have it kind of adjust based on the lighting in your room. Now there's more features in that, but there's just some things to think about. And um, then you can also, most of the newer computers can handle this. In Zoom, if you have a lot of participants, you can actually decide how many people show up in the gallery. So by default, it's 25, but you can set it up to 49. And for if you're a meeting host, then you will see security. If you're not a meeting host, you're not going to see the security. But this is where you can actually change security options on the fly. So you don't have to go back into the settings in like zoom.us or in the app. So that's kind of a nice feature to know about. And then um, if you are a meeting host and you've set up polls, you can actually run them from your, your um, toolbar. Also, if you're a, a co-host as well. If you need to edit the, po the poll or add a new poll, they've got this edit poll, which is a neat feature. It actually pops you back into your zoom.us account. So you'd have to be the the meeting um, organizer, the one who owns that account. And then you can quickly on the fly create some more polls that will then be available in that particular meeting. Then in chat, if you set it up back on zoom.us, so you log in you know, through the, the browser, if you set it up so you allow your users to upload files, then they'll see this little icon and then they can upload a file to chat. And if you've allowed them to save chat, which most people do now, then they can click the little buttons with three dots and they can save their chat, which is really nice, especially if you're in network meetings and things like that. 
And if you do save it, it's going to go to a folder on your system called Zoom, and then it'll actually have the title of the whatever the meeting is and the date and the time. So it's really easy to see what that chat is. Now, live transcription is pretty cool. It's been out, it's been out for a little while. If you're the meeting host, you can turn that on. If you are a participant, you don't have the ability to turn it on, but you can, you can choose not to see it if you don't want to. But what I really like is this live trans, transcription, and it's pretty darn good at transcribing as you're talking and as other people are talking. So it is kind of a nice feature depending on, you know, what you're presenting and who's in the meeting and so forth. Now, breakout rooms, you can set up, you have to go through zoom.us initially to turn them on. And then that's something that the meeting organizer can set up. And then um, I think the host can do it. I apologize. I kind of forget if the co-host can do it or not. Um, and then you have reactions. The reactions are kind of fun. You can actually control what reactions show up if you go back into zoom.us, but they've added some nice reactions. So if you are a presenter and the, the participants want to kind of answer questions you might ask, so the participants could click a green check for yes, a, a, the red circle for no, um, and then another thing as a participant, you could kind of subtly try to hint to the meeting organizers or whoever's running the meeting, you'd like it to speed up or slow down a little bit with these little icons. Now, just be aware other people are gonna see them too, but you can give a little, hey, let's speed this thing up. Or if you need a coffee break, there's a little coffee. Now, what's really nice is if you're in a big group and you want to recognize people that want to add or say something or ask a question, then you can tell them to raise their hand. And what that does is if it's in a big group, it moves their picture in the little gallery view up toward the top so you can see it, especially if you have a big meeting where you have multiple screens worth of people. So it moves them up so the uh, meeting uh, organizer and the host can see that. All right, and then one other thing, this is kind of fun, and it's it's been around for a little while, but a lot of people don't know about it. And you can only do this if you're the meeting, um, the meeting host, the one who set it up uh, or in charge of running it. So you have, normally you have the speaker in the gallery view. Speaker means you really don't want to see everybody else. You just want to focus on the speaker. Gallery allows you to see whatever the speaker is sharing or whoever's sharing the screen, but also see the people in a, a gallery view. And in gallery view, it's kind of nice if you have two monitors, you can drag the gallery view over to another monitor where you can see more people. But here's the fun part. It's called immersive and it's relatively new, fun. If you only have two people in the meeting they, and they actually tell you, give you little numbers down here. So there's three different scenes you can put the two of you in. One's where you're kind of in an outdoor uh, patio area with a, an out, a little fire in the background. Uh, one's where you're in the kitchen and another one, I forget what this one is, but they're kind of fun. Then if you have a few more people, you can put them in pictures on the wall. That's this one over here. Or they can kind of be sitting at a, a table. And then you have more people, you can put them in different types of kind of gallery views so you can see them a little differently. So that's kind of fun. Again, if you're the meeting uh, host, then you can do that. So you might test that out on uh, some of your next meetings. So that's it for some tips on uh, Zoom for participants and meeting organizers. Hope you were able to get some new ideas and that I covered something that might be of use for you if you're a participant or a meeting host in Zoom. And hope to see you next Monday on our live, which we'll be talking about the 3D objects in Microsoft uh, 365. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.